So yesterday I posted a video about my off-grid solar power system that can power my Tesla. And the most common question was what is the total cost of this system and when is the payback period? Or over how much time does it take for this to pay itself back relative to the cost of electricity from the grid? And I spent the whole morning cranking out the numbers and I think they're going to shock you because it's a lot cheaper than what I anticipated. So first cost is the inverters and those cost $1,500 each. Next cost is the solar panels. If you buy my favorite 440 watt monocrystallines, they will cost $4,500 for 10,000 watts. But in this comparison, I wanna show alternatives. So we're also gonna calculate with used solar panels. And 10,000 watts of used solar panels cost $2,200. Next, let's talk about the supplies for building this system. These fuses are not cheap and those circuit breakers are not cheap. The total cost is $250. Next cost is the wires to connect all of the components together. So we have four aught gauge welding cable with lugs and heat shrink. We have six gauge SO cord and then we have solar extension MC4 cables. And this cost can vary, but a minimum is $200. Next, the bus bars are $20 each. Next, a high quality Victron shunt is $110. Next, this sub panel was from Home Depot for $55. The hardy board was $20. The drywall anchors were $15. And tools that you do not own, like this crimper, I added another $200 to the cost. And that totals out to $690. But let's call it $1,000 because typically there's always something that you're not thinking about or you might need some extra cable. Next, the batteries. So for this 15 kilowatt hour battery right here, it's a DIY battery. It only cost $3,000. It was $2,800 for the cells. Um, this box was $30. $30 and then $100 for the BMS. But let's round up to $3,000 anyways. Now if this battery right here was a Battleborn and it had the same capacity, we would spend $11,875 for it. So yeah, these calculations are going to go for DIY batteries or my cheap ones that I recommend on my website. If you were to use the Energy Tech, it's $3,800, and that's a pretty good deal for the capacity, especially compared to Battleborn. Now, if you build two DIY batteries, that will be $6,000, and that is ridiculously cheap. You get 30 kilowatt hours and something that should last 10 to 20 years minimum. So let's say you build an expensive setup with new solar panels, you spend $1,000 for supplies, and you have a DIY battery for $3,000. The total cost will be $11,500. Now let's say you make that same setup, but with used solar panels. The total cost will be $9,200. Now let's say that you have new panels and a big DIY battery, two of these. It will cost $14,500. Now for the next example, let's say you build a system with new solar panels and you have three energy tech. So this is a plug and play system, super easy to build. It should only take one day. And with 30 kilowatt hours of storage, like this is a seriously large system. And with three of those battery packs, it comes out to $19,900. So let's round up all of these numbers to $20,000. And let's say you live out here in Nevada and electricity is 10 cents per kilowatt hour. The payback period will be 9.9 .9 years. That's with a plug and play system with energy tech batteries. If you do a DIY battery, it should take only four to five years to make your money back. And that's out here in Nevada. Now let's change this for where I used to live in California. And where I used to live in California, the peak rate was 47 cents per kilowatt hour and off peak was 19 cents per kilowatt hour. And the average price paid per kilowatt hour was 24 cents. So the payback period there would be 4.1 years with a $20,000 system. If you had a DIY battery system, it would only be two years to make your money back. And all of these calculations assume that you have 5.5 sun hours every single day from your system. So the STC output of a 10,000 watt system over the course of the day should be able to produce 55,000 watt hours. Unfortunately, these batteries, if you have a small battery, will not be able to store all of that. So you would have to charge the Tesla during the day. And this is for a purely off-grid system. Um, I like to have this battery for at night. Um, I'm not using this during daytime. When the sun is up, I'm charging my Tesla directly and that's it. Luckily, I have a battery so big that I can actually charge every other day and sometimes every three days depending on how I drive. But overall, it should be under 10 years for your payback period. After that 10 years, every watt hour that this produces is pure profit. 
Furthermore, if you were to use this power to mine Bitcoin, you can potentially make more over the next 10 years. And if you use it to run an EV and you compare that cost to gas, you are saving a ton of money. You are literally building your own gas station in your house that provides 220 miles of range every single day. Or you can use this system to run your air conditioner and that could save a ton of money as well. Now, if I did all of these calculations about five or 10 years ago for solar panels and batteries, um, a lot of these payback periods would be double the length of time. So around 15 to 20 years to make your money back. But luckily that's not the case anymore because a lot of these components are a lot cheaper nowadays. Next, we should talk about the value of this system if the grid were to go down. Who cares what the cost of electricity is from the grid when you can produce your own power for decades on end? That, in my opinion, is priceless. And for me personally, I went off grid about 10 years ago and I was off grid for nine years total. I do have a grid connection with these houses I just bought, but previously I did it out of desperation. Um, I could not run a generator all day long because of the cost and the noise, especially stealth camping on the streets. Um, I was homeless for a very long time and I could barely walk. Um, and I also had a lot of experience doing circuit design and programming and other things. So I started building my own solar power systems. Um, so for me, I was never ever calculating how much it costs. I had to do it because I had to do it and I had no other choice. So back in those days, a 100 watt panel cost me $500. Nowadays, it is like four or five times cheaper and people are are still complaining about the price. And the payback period is so short that it's like non-existent. Just how much I save in electricity costs running this air conditioner in this workshop when it's 120 degrees outside, it's already gonna pay for itself in a couple years. But I don't think a lot of people have done these calculations. Um, if you talk to salespeople that like to sell loans for grid tie systems, they'll lay all these numbers out. And it's very easy to beat the grid. Even if electricity costs are very, very low, over like 20 years, um, you can almost always pay back any solar power system. And many salespeople use this to sell systems. But a lot of people do not do the calculations for off-grid systems. Um, off-grid systems do cost more because you have to build your own battery. Or you need to buy a battery that you can hook up to these inverters. Using the grid is a lot easier, but when you have your own off-grid system, you have zero dependency on the grid. That grid can shut down to zero and you are totally fine. But it's not for everyone to build this. I understand um, some people, you might be better off just getting a Tesla solar power system like I have on my main house. That thing produces 100 kilowatt hours a day. It will pay for itself in due time. And yeah, it's great, especially when you have four air conditioners like I do. But if you want to save money and you have an electric car and you like to build things, these systems are really great. I mean, for the car, Cost, especially with the DIY battery, you're gonna make back your money very quickly. Also, the cost of EVs is dropping um, significantly on the used market and the new market. Like what you can get EV-wise for 45 grand is just incredible. And people will literally tell you that they're too expensive, but they will go out there and buy all of these other SUVs that cost like $50,000 each. So I don't think that excuse is warranted. Um, you can buy a Model 3 or a Model Y very cheaply, or a used BMW i3. I have a friend that lives off grid. He bought his i3 for about 15 grand. You would never see me driving that car in a million years, but he's powering it off grid. It was 15 grand. And yeah, you guys can do it too. If you want to not be dependent on the grid, you absolutely can do it for very cheap. It's not that expensive. I don't know where people keep coming up with this. About five or 10 years ago, it was very expensive. And yeah, these calculations would be entirely different. But nowadays, I, I don't think so. Especially, we've got lithium iron phosphate. Like these are high quality, these are UL certified. Everything here should last at least 20 years or more. You can even buy batteries with warranties now that are over a decade long. So yeah, I don't know. I think it's great. But then again, I'm very biased. Personally, I wish we could have some little nuclear reactors with a lithium titanate or lithium iron phosphate system and then charge everything with that. That would be so cool. Um, those things run 24 hours a day. Solar, you can only extract from 5.5 hours a day, upwards of seven if you live in a really good environment for solar, but it can get as low as three sun hours a day for people that live in cloudy environments. So it really depends on where you live and other factors, but solar panels are cheap. 
deep, you could over panel this system to 16,000 watts and then have a 16 kilowatt hour battery. And then you could limit the current on the output on these inverters, which means you could charge at max output for whatever your battery can handle. So you can make this system work in so many different ways. Anyways, that's just the video today. Um, the payback period is anywhere from two years to 10 years, um, depending on what components you buy. Um, I hope you guys like the calculations. If you disagree with any of my calculations, please leave a comment below and I will talk to you later. Bye.